I'm a big kayaker and one of my favorite places to go kayaking is this place called Indian Mount Island Trail. It's in the middle of nowhere in lower Alabama. Um, there's some Indian Native American community that built these very, very high mounds, 52 feet I think, uh, in the absolute middle of nowhere. Um, I'll show you a satellite view right here. And uh, it's pretty crazy. So uh, you start over here, actually I'm sorry, right over here usually, and you kayak your way through the little creeks and you eventually get there. But unfortunately, last time I went there in February, we uh, got we kayaked there and we're walking to the mounds and all of a sudden there is this huge, uh, I'll call it a river, temporary river, that was there because uh, the water level was too high and uh, it had spilled over into the, the island, we'll call it. This is a little mini island and prevented us from walking further uh, unless we wanted to get bit by a thousand snakes and you know ten alligators that were probably hiding in this water um, So we decided not to cross not to be stupid for the day, but we, we kind of left a little disappointed uh, And so I was thinking you know for a little project to show you how to use some things in Google Sheets. Let's predict um, Based off historical data what month would be the best month or maybe what months to probably avoid doing a trip to the Indian mounds or anywhere um, for problems like this. Uh, so let's go, here's the um, Indian Mound Island Trail. Uh, this is the, kind of the official website and if you scroll down to the bottom they have this little note here. It says Claiborne Dam river stages ranging from 6 to 19 feet um, blah 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 are the best. Okay so now when I went there it was 20 feet so I was you know, I guess a little risky or, or whatever. Um, and so I'm, what my goal is, I'm gonna say, I wanna know, um, my baseline will be 18 feet. Uh, we can make it whatever we want, but we're gonna say 18 feet uh, will be the baseline. Uh, everything above 18 feet will be bad, below will be good. Okay, and we're not gonna talk about anything below six. Okay, that would mean it's the water's too, the water's too low for you to probably even get there. So this is the way we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do this all in Google Sheets. So I have pulled up uh, the official, let's say, the official website for the dam, Claiborne Dam. By the way, just so you know, let's zoom out. Let's show you where Claiborne Dam is, how, how this all works together. So Claiborne Dam is the last dam or maybe the last major dam um, until we it gets the water travels to Bottle Creek. So the water levels here are very important for telling us what the water levels will look like um, at the Indian Mounts. Okay, makes sense. So we go on this website, and every dam pretty much has a website like this that's hosted by the USGS. So you can probably just Google it and find it pretty quickly. And we are looking for um, tab separated data and we're doing the year whole year of 2020 so we're going to start January 2020 and we'll end on the last day of 2020 okay and we click go show us the data so we're going to well let's take a look to see what we're looking at here. So it's broken down for us by hour. So this is 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3, 4 a.m. This is the time zone, and this is the actual water level. Okay, and the rest of the information we're not gonna figure to worry too much about. So we're gonna copy everything, starting from the top. So I'm double clicking, and I'm gonna scroll. Okay, and then I'm, you know, there's so much data. It's, it's a ridiculous amount of data since it's by hour. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and holding the shift key, copy the last one. And now I've selected all the data. I'm going to copy. And now we're going to go to our Google Sheet. Now this is we're going to build this template, but this is kind of what we're going to um, see in the end. But I've, I haven't put any data in here. So let's 
open, let's create a new sheet here. And let's paste the data. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click, paste special, paste values only. It's important to do this. It's gonna take, it's take, it's gonna take a, well, that's pretty quick actually. It's important to do that because if you don't paste it like that, it might actually try to paste it all in one cell. Okay, so we don't need these two columns. So I'm selecting column A and column B. I'm gonna right click, delete columns. Nor do I care too much about the time zone. So let's delete that column. Let's give this a nice, you know, header here, water level. And let's delete column C as well. We don't need this one. Now there's so much data here. So uh, one more thing, we can double click the line in the middle to expand the data to the longest, longest value. There's so much data here. I, I really don't care about hour. I'm going to choose an arbitrary hour and let's say 8 a.m. Show me the 8 a.m. values every single day. Okay. And so there's a few different ways to do this, but I'm going to use the hour function. So hour equal sign hour parentheses and choose one of our values here and then close the bracket, hit enter. And this tells us the hour in the military sort of time, 0 to 24, 23. So you can see hour 1, hour 2, hour 3. And as we begin the next day, it starts 0 again. So let's, we can drag that formula. Or, you know, there's many, many different ways to apply the formula to everything. But an easy way is to double click on the bottom of the corner where then you see the crosshair double click and it'll apply that it will apply that formula to all the values all the way down so we'll call this hour while we're here it just drives me crazy when um, I miss the row headers so let's click view freeze one row and again just small little things I like to make it bold so I use my keyboard shortcut there, Control-B, or Command-B for Mac, Mac users. And I really just like everything to be centered. So let's just select all these values here. And horizontal alignment, uh, I prefer the center. It just looks cleaner, don't you think? Okay, so let's filter everything. So um, choose a cell on your table, and then data, create a filter. And let's filter, um, we'll click the filter icon by hour. Click, uh, should work, yeah, we won't change anything. And then just deselect eight. So we have everything now. We have all the hours except for the eighth hour. And uh, what we're gonna do is select a cell. And then, uh, you know, we could, we're, we're gonna delete all these rows you know I mean there's different ways to delete rows right we could just select a, a few different rows and then I think there's um, there's a delete delete selected rows right we can do that that works or we could delete some selected rows and right click delete selected rows that works as well but by far the most efficient way is to choose a cell hold the shift and um, for me, I'm a Mac user, Command or Control, and then the down arrow. And that selects all the rows going down because, because we chose the down arrow key. And now we can right click, delete selected rows. And that, um, that's, that makes it just so much easier. And this is a time intensive thing, so it, it'll take a few seconds to delete everything. Yep, okay, and it's deleted everything, so let's remove our filter. So data, turn off filter. And now we're left with um, a year's worth of data. Okay, and we really don't need the hour anymore. 
So let's delete that. All right, so now we uh, need to get the month. So let's make a month column. And just like our, we can use, there's a month function, M-O-N-T-H, and then choose your, your, uh, your data value, I'm sorry, your date value, close the bracket, and one is for January. So it's not zero, it's one. And just like before, we're gonna double click the crosshairs. Okay. And this is pretty good. So what do we want to do next? Well, now we need to start adding some things up. So let's make a separate table over here. Month. And we're going to we're going to say January 2020, February 2020. Get the idea. Up. Okay. And now let's um, do something here to count how many days, number of days in the month. So we're going to use a function called count if s. So let's let me show you how to use it and then explain what it's doing. So criteria range one. So um, I want this formula to tell me how many days we have in January 2020. So, um, oh, I have to do one more thing here. So let's bring this down here. Month number. So January is month one. So oh, I'm, I'm just so quick here. I don't, ex I don't explain always what I'm doing. So I'm putting a formula here. I mean, you could do this. You could do one, two, three, four, but you know, I'm just a little lazy sometimes. And I'm gonna use an equal sign and I'm gonna add one to the previous value here, G4 plus one. And then I can copy this formula here, 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 here. And you can see what it's doing. It's, it's carrying the, the uh, relative cell reference over. Okay, and the way that I'm, I'm moving the formulas like that, I'm holding the shift key. So shift, and then I hold the, air, I hold the shift down, and then using the left or right arrows, or down and up, and then I can do control V to paste. That's how I do that. Okay, so let's go back to the count if uh, formula. So count if S. So criteria range one, well, let's see. So criteria range one will be this column and criteria one is the month number. And let's see what happens here. Yeah, so it worked. So this is basically saying there's many, I'm sure there's a thousand videos on YouTube of what count if S does, but basically it's just counting how many values in row C match uh, the value of G4. So um, there are 31 ones because when you get to February, it changes to a two, right? Three, four, all the way to 12. And um, we can't, before we you know paste this to all these other cells, just like we did above, we have to actually, let me show you what happens if we paste. It's not gonna work because you notice, look up here, it's now column D. Well, we're not adding any, you know, we're not, there's nothing in column D. So we have to, uh, I'm gonna call it absolutize. We want C to always be constant. So you, the way you do that is you put a dollar sign in front of C, like this. And now when I paste this over here, it has not changed to D. And so, Let's paste these to the other ones. Okay, and the, one of the last pieces of information we need is um, the sum of water level. 
because we want this because we're I want the average water level in the month. So sum of water level, well, it's just like count if s, but instead of count, we use sum, sum if s. So the sum range is column B. And as you may know, we're going to use the dollar signs here. And the criteria range 1 is um, column C. And then the range 1 criteria is month. So let's see if that worked. Okay, so then we need to absolutize it. I don't know if that's a word. And let's just do a dummy check to make sure that's right. So sum. And let's just add everything in in month one manually. 10, 26, 81. So it's it's what we could have right here. And let's paste that over all these rows. So the average water level is pretty straightforward now per day. Let's make sure per day. It's uh, this divided by this. It's the sum of the water level in the whole month divided by the number of days in the month. Okay, I don't like so many decimal, point, decimal points, it's kind of useless, so let's decrease that. And paste all these values, I'm sorry, these that formula into all these here. And here we go. Let's select our whole table, select a value in the table and do control A or command A. Let's add a nice box. Oh, that's way too much. There we go. And then let's wrap the text, center it, vertical align, horizontal, it's already centered. Let's make all these, something happened. Try that again. There we go. Bold, bold. And now it's pretty easy to graph everything. So, and let's add a table here. We can make it thick too. A thick outer border to make it look, you know, Kind of nice. Let's make this also kind of pretty. And to improve our table a little bit, select all these columns from the top. And just like we did before, select the line in the middle. And that reduces the space to only what is the minimum necessary. Okay, so let's make a few graphs. So let's do graph by year. So let's select all of column A, all of column B, insert uh, chart, and that is the year. Now, wouldn't it be interesting, as we talked about in the very beginning of the video, to make a kind of a minimum value? So I want the, the water level to be um, Ideal water level is, let's say, 18. And copy that all the way to the bottom. And let's add that as a maybe like a red line all the way through. So it's easier to see the ideal water level. So right click on your chart and data range. And you see we have one series water level. Let's add another one. Choose the box, the grid icon, and select here, and select all of column D. And this should work. Let's see what happens. There we go. So if I change this to, you know, 25, it would become 25, but I want 18. You know, just to be safe, let's do 17. So you can already tell. I went at the wrong time. <laughs> I mean, I know my, I went in 2021 and not 2020, but you know, maybe this is a lot of storms going on. Um, 
you know, it seems that maybe in the summer, definitely not an ideal time to go uh, kayaking down here, but, you know, we'll, let's continue our analysis. But over, you know, first, just an interesting quick analysis. Interesting first overview. Okay, now let's make like a circle charter, a pie chart or something of the months. So let's choose all of our months up here and the average water level per day. And insert chart. It's a little broken. Why is that happening? Well, let's change it to a pie chart. So chart type, pie. That looks, that looks pretty good. This is better. So I chose a column chart. It was one of my suggested options. If it wasn't suggested, you can find it down here. So this is nice. And let's let's do another part pie chart. So again, I'm going too fast. Let me slow down a little bit. So I select this chart. I um, did Control C to copy it, and I just put a, a chose chose any cell and did Control V to paste it. So I don't have to do all my work again. And now, just like before, we can double click chart. Let's say setup. And let's choose another a pie chart. Pretty interesting. So let's do one more thing in our Google Sheet. So the Alabama Canoe Trails people say that the levels of Claiborne Dam should be between 6 to 19 feet. So let's do a calculation of how many days in the months of 2020 um, were between 6 and 19 feet. So let's, I'm adding two new columns here. Let's do above 6 feet, question mark, below 19 feet, question mark. So we're going to use an if statement here. If this is, um, let's use, if this is above 6, 1, if it's not, 0. Okay? And is it below 19? If this is above 19, 0, well, we're going to make it the other way around. And it needs to be a 1 here. So if this was, let's say, 18 feet, they should both be 1. Both 1, question mark. Great names, I know. If this, actually, we can use and. And this, this. Yeah, so if it's, if they're both one, this will be true. If they're both false, if one of them is false, then it'll be uh, false. And we're going to use an if statement here. If, if this equals true, make it a one. If not, make it a zero. Okay, so let's test it out. Let me just manually put one here. Yeah, it works. And we're going to copy this formula all the way down. And now what we do here, let's add a new, um, some new cells here. Shift down. Our charts are kind of getting in the way here. Number of good days in month between 6 and 19 feet. So we can do this by using Probably sum if s. Let's just copy this. Uh, we'll copy this formula. 
but instead of B, we're going to use G. And we're going to take off the decimal points here. We don't need this. And let's copy that formula to all the months. And then we can do percentage of good days. So it's that would be this number, the number of good days divided by the number of days in the month. And let's format it as a percentage. So se um, select that cell, format percent, and then paste the formula on all the days. And then let's make a chart number of good days and the month name. Insert chart. And we want a column chart. And that looks pretty good. So let's move that over here. This table really does not want to move. So pretty, pretty interesting. So August was the only month that had 100%. Um, it kind of dropped off, and in December we see a big drop. But it looks like visually June to November, so six months, um, have a, a pretty good um, success rate, um, at least based off 2020. So. Y'all, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I think this is uh, some interesting conclusions we can talk about here. Um, of course, this is not just restricted to this one little place that you can kayak in Lower Alabama. Um, but you can use this, this strategy for analyzing your data and kind of anything um, to help you make decisions for the future. So for example, if I wanted to, um, if I'm an outfitter and I'm planning a kayak trip, um, you know, let's say three or four times a year, then I'm probably not going to schedule any in the spring or the, the, you know, the early months of the year. I'm probably going to schedule them in September, October, or November, and maybe December. Um, and obviously check the forecast out, out as well. Um, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look good, too good for the early few months. And I went, uh, as I said earlier in February, um, which, um, you know, wasn't, wasn't the best choice, I guess, considering the historical data. Anyways, uh, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, maybe leave a little comment of a video that you would like to see in the future and why you enjoyed this video. Um, I know that I do things kind of fast sometimes, so apologize for that. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I hope this video helps you in some way, and I hope that you have a good day.